I'll be showing you how to use JInput, which is a Java library that allows you to control anything basically that's connected to your control computer, whether it be a um, remote control, Xbox control, your touch screen, mouse, keyboard, the list goes on. Um, so let's get started. Let's create a new project. Next, next, and let's just call it JInput for now. Okay, now that the project is open, let's create a new class. And let's call that class main. Okay. Um, so now let's initialize a class. Um, so before we start writing any code, um, let's add all the dependencies that we need for the library. So file project structure. Let's go to libraries and then click the plus sign Java. Um, so now let's locate um, where all the files are. So don't worry about any of these um, things I'm adding because um, I'll have it in the video description for you to download. Um, so don't worry about that. It's kind of unfortunate that you have to download them one at a time. You can't do like a shift select all. Um, okay, so that's it. I'm done adding all the libraries. So let's click apply. Okay. Um, so usually this is it. That's all you need to do to set it up. But in our case, um, J input relies on two DLL files for it to actually work. So let's go add those. So let's go to the project folder. Um, and now let's go to desktop libs and copy these two DLL files. And then let's go back to our project folder and paste them in here because this is where the class path is. Um, so now when you get back into IntelliJ, you should see that these two files popped up. Okay, so now it's ready to write the actual code, which is the best part. So um, I'm gonna create a controller array and you'll see why I'm doing that instead of an array list or a list. So Alt Enter and make sure you select the right one equals um so first you had to do controller environment dot get default environment dot get controllers so basically what this line of code does is it gets all the controllers connected to your computer um so the reason why um this is a controller array is because this uh, returns an array of controllers so it's kind of unfortunate because you can't call any like you can't call for each on it or something like that um, but it's fine um, okay so controllers dot length um, and now let's print out each one of them so we can see what it prints so let's say let's do controllers I and that should do the trick um, let's run the program. Run. Okay, so now we um, got a whole list of the attached devices. Um, so now you might be thinking like, why are there three, um, three of the same exact device? Well, it's really not because um, the, that is referring to this device, the headphones, which also has the mic and it has um, this control, um, like increase volume, decrease volume. So that's why the three of those. 
Um, so this represents the keyboard. This represents the, the default um, click pad that comes with any computer. And this um, is the one we're going to be um, demoing, which is the one, um, this one, the one I showed before. Um, and this custom interface, that is actually um, the touchscreen because this is a touchscreen laptop. Um, and so you'll notice here that it says HP wireless button driver. Um, so you have to be wary about um, using this as like, like the be all end all because this will sometimes print out stuff that you can't even control because this is um, part of the system and you have no access to it. Um, so usually in my apps, I just allow the user to select which one they want. Um, so that's it for this video. Um, this is part one. There will be a part two, don't worry. Um, so in part two, basically we'll go over um, how to pull the controller, how to um, um, set actions to button clicks um, and all that good stuff. Um, and if you have any trouble getting up to this point, don't worry, just leave a comment down below in the description and I'll be sure to respond. I might even make a video if it's something that is a reoccurring theme. Thank you.